All right. Not black. Okay. Figure out. <laughs> don't, cool. don't just don't roll <laughs> at all. <laughs> yeah. we, we good to go? <laughs> yeah. I guess. So we'll find out. Let's do the things. All right. When last we left off, the honor bound were attacked in the middle of the night. Marsica barely saw a blur of movement in the brush, which brought her attention to the tree line. As she peered just at the edge of town, she saw a hulking orc looking creature. As soon as it was spotted, they had just enough time to wake everyone up, get them out of the tower before the enemy struck. There is a fast paced battle that ensued as Marsica let loose an arrow at a large orc, striking him in the chest, and Quobar lobbed a fireball unknowingly into the center or knowingly uh, into the center of the orc raiding party and incinerated half of them instantly blows were traded traded but inevitably the party came out on top after the fight the honor bound made their way to check on the rest of the town seeing that the guards had dispatched a few orcs of their own the group spoke with mordecai who rallied the rest of the guard to stay up and keep watch for the rest of the night there was some discussion as to if the party should stay up as well, but they decided to go to bed. In the morning, they found that Mordecai had been murdered, and a note in Orcish was pinned to his chest, saying something along the lines of, You thwarted us once, you will not do so again. This town is marked. Making haste, the group concocted a plan with the townsfolk for them to hole up in the nearby ruins while they went to deal with the orc threat. As they ventured into the forest towards Gorilin and the newly forming orc fort, they came across an ancient grove of sorts, and Marsica swore the oath of the oathbound. We pick up now with Marsica pulling a pristinely white bow with gold trim out of the center of the ruins. So, Marsica. Um, okay, so she's speechless and just, like, gently carrying it down, down the stairs of this little ruin that we're at, and just, like, kind of shows everybody wide-eyed what she just got. Just kind of, I, I'm just looking at this and looking back at you. I'm like, ah. <laughs> Flint just strokes his beard and he's like, This will be a hell of a story to tell over dinner. <laughs> uh, that it would. Clover says, uh, Daylight's a wasting. The orc hordes will not waste time. We must continue moving. Will Marsica have any time to attune to this longbow? You have to, to spend an hour with it, and there is um, about... Uh, so you know that it's about a one more night of travel, and then one more day before you guys get there. To okay. where the orcs were seen to be making camp in that area. Oh. Okay. So then. you'd have time in the evening. Okay. So. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah. So. What time uh, of day is it right now? It's about uh, mid to early to mid afternoon at the moment. So. I get moving. So everybody's heading out. <laughs> Can I just have time? Yep, I did. Okay. <laughs> yep. David, you sound like a robot again. <laughs> Rest uh, for the night are can we do. Can we make sure we hunt some kind of beast so I can make us a proper meal? You do have a ranger in the party. Yeah. With a new yeah. bow to test. Oh. Can we keep an eye out as we travel? <laughs> what? Um, yes, Marsica definitely can. I mean, mm -hmm. I feel like she usually is anyway. Yeah. So if you'd like to keep an eye out for some uh, venison, 
or anything along those lines in your trick, you're more than welcome to. Okay. Then, uh, so Marsica will, like, just keep an extra eye out, not just for enemies, but for... Specifically for that. For animals, yeah. Okay. Cool. So, uh... Um, I need that, by the way. No. What? It's not. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so, right. um, Boy. as you make your way out of the grove, the um, treant seems to like almost bow his leaves a little bit as a nod and comes back up as you exit. So, we all notice this. Yeah, he's not particularly hiding it. I, I'd like do my best to give an elegant bow without like falling over. <laughs> nice. I could just imagine him bowing and then just rolling forward like a basketball on accident. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I think so, I would have thanked the tree. And there is a. I'm also uh, would kind of do a nod. All right. So, as you all make your way out of the grove and trek towards Calvio's former home of Gorlin, uh, Marsica, go ahead and make me a perception check. I say that again? What is my perception? Okay. It's a 14 plus stuff. 14 plus stuff. Uh, I'm trying to, I think my perception is plus 7. Where's it at? There we go. Yes, plus 7. Alright, so 21. Alright, yeah. You easily find um, a large, like, 10 point buck walking yeah. through the forest. Like, huge. Um, can I get like it? Almost the size of an elk. <laughs> yeah, you can go for it if you'd like to. Mm-hmm. Um, Are you going to try and sneak up on it? Yeah. All right. Go ahead and make me a stealth roll. Okie dokie. Mm. Um, all right. Fit it this one, too. It's more like an elk, not a deer. But. Okay, and that is a 22 altogether. 22 altogether. Yes. Yeah, you were sneaking up on it unawares. Cool, 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 cool. Can I shoot it? Of course. Yeah, okay. make your attack roll. Shoot, 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 shoot. 25. 25. Yeah, that hits. <laughs> Uh, that is a 11 points of damage. You easily um, strike it down. As you let loose one arrow from the brush, there's a soft, like, exhale of what would have been an elk call as it falls and thuds to the ground. Um, can I go over there and... Like, take my arrow out of it and pick it up, carry it back over to the party? Uh, it'd be hard for you to do it alone. You can sure try. I wanna so try. Make, yeah, make me a strength check. Dang. Okay. I could be poor form to oh, kill okay. an elk and then be like, hey, come carry this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got a 13. 13? It's that's pushing it. You're dragging it along, but you eventually get to the road where everybody else is at, and it's like it, it takes you probably about a good ten minutes from where it was, and everybody's just kind of looking at you. It's okay. She she don't need no man. <laughs> no. Sega Sega would have come up to help anyways, just because okay. he wouldn't want the elk to <laughs> be like desecrated that way. Fair enough. <laughs> 
<laughs> so Sega comes up to help. Um, yeah, and... Sega would have like said a little blessing over the the elk and like thank you for its sacrifice, and then he would have helped you carry it. <laughs> All right. Um. So you a now walks up and he's like, "Well, I know how to cook it, not butcher it." Uh, would Marsica would, Marsica know, how to would know how to do that. Yeah, it's a pretty common thing. Do you want me Marsica to roll? To no. For that, no, you don't okay. need to roll for that. No, cool. that's that is something that your character is like known for being able to do. <laughs> okay. Um. And... So you guys, um, by this point, it's been about um two hours or so, and it's getting to be close to evening. Uh, with what was your perception check again? It was above a twenty. Uh, yes, it yeah. was like a 21 or something. Um, in the distance, you see approaching you, as the sun is starting to get low, two humanoid figures walking along the road. Okay. Um. I'll just, like, go and do a flyby. Like, sure. not, like, buzzing them, but, like, up above a little bit. Looking at them closer? <laughs> yeah. Do they, are they walking funny that Marsica can see that will pinpoint them as, like, a orc versus human uh they don't seem to be walking funny i think i'm like more towards the front so i'll like fall back to the middle and like put my hands on somebody can i wait can i walk while i'm doing this uh you can try you're <laughs> blind so if, if you want to try and walk just uh, get in front of me who's third in line does it matter it doesn't just matter. To go help move, so. Okay. It uh, does somebody. kind of matter because you don't want to grab on to the guy who has to use a cane. Yeah. <laughs> he probably can't support your weight. Well, you can we'll just, just say somebody. It's, it's either Sega or Kakira, one of the two. I'll just put a, a, my hand on Sega and be like, "Don't let me, don't let me fall," and then I'll look through um, Aldra. So flying through, uh, Aldra flies ahead, and you see two elven women wood elves walking along the road and um they have backpacks like traveling oh those are my people so i'll have alder come back and then i'll come out of alder's eyes and be like and just say hey hey marska these these are elves you should uh you should lead this one i got you boo all right um um so i guess marsica will kind of like Marsica and Fang will just kind of jog up ahead and catch up to them. Are they, are they walking towards us or away from yeah. us? They're walking towards you. Okay, okay, yeah, no. I'll, I'll kind of like um, I guess quicken my pace so I can catch up to them a little bit. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll speak to them in Elvish and, and say hello. Uh, and they kind of seem, um, is the rest of the party following closer behind Marsica or are you going ahead of the group? I, I went ahead of the group a little bit. Ahead of the group a bit? Okay. But is but is it... I would say they could probably still see the group a little... Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. So... I'm not, like, rushing, but we're still going. Cool. So as, as you approach them... Edge. All right. Um, as, as you approach them, you see these two um, female uh, wood elves and... They look up to you and say, "Oh, um, interesting seeing you out here. Did you did you get out ahead of them too?" Um, no, I have been traveling with my companions here, and we have been on our own journey. What what are you talking about? Oh well, um. With the recent orc activity in the area, me and, uh, well, and Freya, me and Julie here, we decided to leave and seek shelter closer in uh, near the mountains. And so we cut through the ridge and found ourselves here now. Um, did, did you come from the city? We come from Heyromben. That's, uh... that's where you're from, right? Yeah, yeah. Was it was it attacked? It hasn't been attacked yet, but um, they are preparing for. Uh, they are preparing their defenses. 
but uh, you know our kin. They they're arrogant at times. They believe the the orcs are not smart enough to find their way through the the forest. Yeah, that's true. Um, you said they're readying defenses, so some so that's, some are some are okay. So not all are. Um. You guys, have you run into orcs so far? We've generally been able to steer clear of them. Uh, if they, if we see them in the distance, uh, we jump into the nearest bush and are able to hide. They're not particularly keen individuals. Mm. Um, yeah, I know that. We, uh, like I said, we passed through the mountains a little bit. Um, we heard that they took that human town. A terrible story, that. Um, yes. Um, they, all, all of the um, people of Gorlin are taking shelter and refuge right now in Hordeen's Hamlet. If you're oh. looking for somewhere to go. Is that, is that just up the road? Um, yeah. Just a bit. I'm also going to point in the direction that it is that way. <laughs> like a, how long have we been on the road, Aber? Uh, like probably close to eight hours, give or take. Okay, so she'll say about eight hours in that direction, in point. Down the road. Is, um, are you, you said you're all heading towards the orcs? Like, what are you doing out here? Oh, yeah, um, yes, we are gonna go fight them. Uh, you haven't happened to see an encampment or anything that would potentially signify a, a possible encampment, have you? The two look at each other, um, very concerned. Uh, and they say, and then they look back over at, at your group and they say, Well, I'm, I'm not sure about the capabilities of your companions or yourself, but there's... There's a lot. When I see the elves look, I just, like, stick out from the back and give a wave. <laughs> <laughs> the other one that hasn't been speaking very much, like, awkwardly waves. Um, <laughs> and so, um, they say, well, as, as we were climbing over some, some of the pass, we saw down there that they two, maybe three large bonfires is getting to be quite a... They've moved on from Gorlin, it looks like, and they're making camp in the center. If I'd wager, they're trying to create a block between the sinking country and the rest of Andorra. Why would they... Why would they do that? Divide and conquer, I guess. Interesting. Sinking um, Country is part of the Andorran Kingdom. It was annexed some 30 years ago. Okay. Um, you said two or three large bonfires. Do you know how many orcs about... I, we, we had heard that there may potentially be about 200 orcs. Uh, well, looking down from what we could see the the size of the encampment seemed to support that okay we also um, saw some any... larger figures walking along it definitely not just orcs in there right um they're probably the um the Luron? is that what they're no the Tonnerus. no that's that's the the half, the half or human half things. Yeah, Luron's head partner. There you go. <laughs> His head partner. <laughs> His head partner. Um, yes, well, whatever that is, I, we're trying to stay very clear of that place. Okay. Um, is there anything else out of the ordinary that you noticed about the encampment? No. No? That's, that's what we've seen. Um, could you tell us exactly which direction it is? Um, they point down the road and they say, um, it, they seem to 
have taken just a little bit off the ways of the crossroads where you know th where the T comes in. Um, like if you're moving north from Gorlin, if you were to go right, you go towards the sinking country. You go left, you go towards this, the the great city. Right. Okay. Um, they are near that T intersection. Okay. Thank you. Um, um, how about I just introduce you to my companions real quick, and then if they don't have any questions for you, you can be you can continue walking if you don't have any questions for us. Sure. Sure. I'm always glad to meet new people. Uh, so Marsica will walk with them back towards the group and uh, introduce everybody to them. They all they wave and say hello. Um, I'm Julie. This is Freya. Pleasure and to meet you both. Son of Vorkoth. <laughs> Interesting. Um, Marsica will also, I'll just say to them just generally, they gave me a lot of good information about the orc encampment that we're heading towards. But if you guys have any other questions for them or anything you'd like to say to them. I think they're they heard everything that went on though, right? Say that again, David. Everything that went on though, right? It keeps cutting out like the first thing you say. I'm asking if um, they heard every, if we would have heard everything if it, what, that they said. It would have been on the cusp. Of, uh, in the uh, since there was some space, but I mean, Siga would have been would... able to know. Yeah, everything Siga with the passive Siga perception. has the feet, and he has that feet to where if he knows the language, he can read lips. Oh can feel. yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you you guys. I mean, and the information is easily disseminated. Right. So Flint like walks up from the back of the party, like stepping in between everyone. Like, excuse me, excuse me. Gets up to the to the elves and like takes out two rations he's like you've given us information make sure you eat well and travel safe and he hands <laughs> the ration to each they each take them and they say oh uh, we, we greatly appreciate it but we, i mean we we have plenty of food shouldn't you keep some for yourself make sure you eat well and travel safe uh, yes we we will and they awkwardly pocket the rations how many rations do you have left those are my last two that I had prepared. But <laughs> I, have, I have a whole bunch of venison now that I can cook and prepare more. I suppose there is that. Fair enough. So, um, unless there's anything, any other questions you guys would like to ask them, um, they will head on their way towards Hordeen's Hamlet. All right. So... You guys get a few more hours of travel in you, and evening begins to fall. Are you going to make camp, or are you going to push through the night? I think we should, we should make, make camp. My vote is to make camp. I agree. Same. Okay. Flint, do you have anything you'd like to say? I'm going to start cooking. All right. <laughs> so <laughs> you get a pot going, you get the campfire set up, and you all um, make camp in uh, what within what seems to be these really interesting kind of like standing stones that come up um, in the area. Were those the ones that we noticed on our way towards? Uh... Andorra when we left Gorlin the first time? Uh, these are a different set. Okay. Yeah. Can I save but, just enough venison to make sure I can do my special dish in the morning? Which special dish are you trying to do? The stew? Uh, yeah, the stew. Yeah, sure. Cool. Um, so, um, make me an intelligence check, Clobar. Okay. Not good. <laughs> what do we got here? Seven? Yeah. 
yeah okay cool so um you guys all make camp and you have a moment to yourself uh clobar would say like to clobar would like to say to the group um we should have a plan uh going forward uh, if we attempt to take these uh these foes on head on uh, we may encounter some trouble however if we ambush them uh, and weaken their numbers catch them off guard uh, we stand a better chance of success i think we should try to be sneaky so no um just running in and starting a firefight literally, literally. <laughs> <laughs> it was a firefight. Beat me to it. I, you need not worry. I have uh, my fire spell has a range of about 150 feet. I can I can cast it from quite a safe distance. Damn it! All I'm saying is we don't want to catch the attention of the whole encampment when we first arrive. Uh, he says, um, but uh, it is probably the most likely way to thin their numbers if we can get point. to corral into a small space and then fireball yeah if we can get a large amount of them with one fireball i would be okay with it but i don't so, think it's worth blowing our cover for five orcs yeah like say if we can get past the outer defenses like any um <laughs> maybe ranger um archers or anything like that that would be guarding the outside of the encampment and then we can see the inside of the encampment we can see huge groups of them then we can start blowing them up is there any chance that um we may have allies is there any chance that your metal friend may make an appearance i I don't know if we can count. I wouldn't count on it. Just because we last we heard is they were heading out to the um Sinking uh, Country. Yeah. We could have probably tried to convince those elves to fight them. I don't think they were very um keen on that thought. Yeah. They uh they seemed very concerned about the numbers of the orcs. Never heard to try. Um, is there does anyone have any thoughts on maybe like sabotaging parts of the encampment and getting rid of a whole bunch of them at one in one go without maybe shooting a fireball like maybe instead of starting a fireball we just start, start a fire and burn the whole place down uh, Clobar yeah. said, I, I believe you mentioned before that the, they had some sort of religious motivation. Uh, if we were to damage some religious icon, uh, it may incense them enough to, to, uh, make a mistake. True. They would just possible. be really, really angry at us. Right of an Motivate orc's raid. Something I never want to be on the receiving end of. Maybe just stay away from any pits that you find. Yeah. I feel like if there is a religious, like, idol in there or something, it'll probably be by the main tent within the encampment. It'd be our best bet to look. We figured out, when Marska and I figured out where it was, would we know if there's anywhere to get a vantage point on the encampment? Um, it's... Go ahead and make me a survival check. Oh, shit. Can I have help? I mean, if you're asking Marsica for help, yeah. Yep. Maybe... Can I just help her? Because her survival check is going to be better than mine. Sure. <laughs> uh, okay. You say that. Uh... Uh, that's a dirty 20. Oh, you can roll again. It's with advantage because I'm helping you. Oh, right. Duh. Sorry. 
Uh, no, we're sticking with the dirty 20. <laughs> <laughs> the second one was a nat one. Perfect. So, you remember, uh, if, if you remember correctly, with that T intersection, um, it's a little bit far away off of the mountain pass that comes down, right? Um, but, and so there's kind of a, 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 not a plain, but like a flat area. It's, it's the valley of the, of it, you know? So there will be yeah. hills and there will be other things. Um, but sometimes they're sparse. Sometimes they're closer together. You're not exactly sure where this orc fort is. So you're not sure what the situation is going to be when you get there. If the vantage uh, we point should, is going to be useful, we should try and find some kind of vantage point before we do anything to this encampment. I Kikira, agree. At least know what we're doing. I concur. Does Kakir have something? Um, I can fly. I don't know if that would help with anything. That would help a lot. A lot. Well, they, have, they have bats, um, but we might be able to figure something out. Do we have anything to deal with bats? More flying things. Uh, I mean, I can shoot them, and if I hit them well enough, then I could potentially damage their wing flying, and they would have to they would have to land. Or fall. Or fall. Okay. Oh, go ahead. So you guys gonna say, I've got some spells up my sleeve, and I can turn into just about anything. Granted, I can't do anything flying yet, but we're getting there. I wouldn't say that's just about anything. <laughs> what? Well, if you're talking like of all things to be turned into, if the only things she can't turn into are things that fly, that's just about anything. <laughs> I guess. Flint still cooking? Anything Flint would like to say? Flint has total faith in the party's combat capabilities, considering he is not very good himself, so he is just cooking and making sure everyone is well fed. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, I just have a question for everybody, though. Oh. So, since I wasn't with, I haven't been with you guys for very long, it sounds like you guys have run into orcs before, from what I've picked up on conversation. What, what did you guys run into? What's happened in the past? Well, story wait. time. We does Courtney know what happened, or does Courtney not know what happened? Courtney kind of knows what happened. Okay, so then we should legit explain it. Okay, okay. That, that changes a lot. Yeah. Um. Heaven. <laughs> All right, recap time. I want to turn into the guy from Ant Man, you know, and just do it that way. That'd be great if I could do that. Oh my anyway. God. Um. Okay, so <laughs> way back in the day, back in August, this was. We went and we chased down some orcs. They were right outside of Gorland, and they were all what like, is it mean in game bad. time?" Huh? Three weeks ago, or a little over two weeks ago in game time. Yeah, two weeks ago. Wow, that seems weird. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so we went and we hunted down some orcs because they were being meanie pants. Is meanie pantses? Anyway, and we found them, and they had this big old encampment. And Calvio and I, we were sneaking around. And we were doing real good. But Excelsior and um, Kakira, they tried to be sneaky, but, or no, Kakira might have tried, but Excelsior definitely didn't. And well, they kind of did their thing, and we had to go help them. But then we broke into the camp, and um, we were fighting them, and there were crazy orcs, kind of like we've already fought. There was like a witchy one, and there was a big old bad guy, and, uh, and, and well, um, I think it was Excelsior that threw one. There was a pit, and he threw it down the pit. He threw the big leader down the pit. Not just one, but specifically the leader. Oh, also there was this one that was flying on a bat, and he was sacrificing people into the pit. So, you know, um, Excelsior threw one into the pit. We killed the others. We uh, covered the pit up 
you know, and we shot the bat, but it flew off. It got away. That one escaped. Escape. And um, did we burn the place down? I, I vaguely remember Elthior burning. Elthior burning. Elthior did. That's right. And we burned the place down, and that was that. I got a grumpy dagger that was cursed. Oh yeah, yeah. And Calvio had a. That was where that dagger came from. Yep. Okay. Flint's like stopped oh. cooking and he's just looking at Marsico with like jaw dropped a little bit and eyebrow cocked. Just like, what the? <laughs> oh, no, the story. Stay away from pits. Don't touch anything. Um, orc bad. Orc bad. So, did you guys find out what they were trying to do with the pit? Uh, no. We never no. found out for sure. All we know we is that think... people were going to sacrifice down it, and that we think it had to do something with the um, the chained one potentially. We actually learned more about this. Or uh, we think we Gorlock. think that it has Gorlock. something to do with them making tonarooks. They're sacrificing things that have the half demon right. half orc or that. demon orcs or whatever they are. Okay. Um, there are runes on the pit that we and I gestured to Kakira um, messed with and stopped it. But it's a pretty deep pit so runes or no runes don't want to go in. You guys kind of sound or um David, you kind of sound like a robot. They probably turn to Calvio and be like, did you step on them? <laughs> probably laugh. <laughs> We're cautious then, but, um, no. No, actually I put a table up. Sounds like better, a better right? choice. Alright, what's what's with the voice? It's not intentional, it's something that just happens with this Discord. I was gonna say, is it because of mine being on? I was doing this on the Discord the other day and it was just me. Oh, well, never mind yep. then. It's something wrong with... On... My computer just apparently wants me to sound... Like a dork? Like Alvin the Chipmunk. <laughs> yep. I'm sure th this is how you get viewers, right? No. Hey, did you see that one D&D stream with that guy that's sounded like Alvin the Chipmunk and a robot? Oh my together? god. <laughs> it's funny because you guys talk about it, but I can't hear it because I have him muted. Oh my so, god. So I, can, awesome. I can hear him in real life. <laughs> Fair enough. Um. So is there anything else okay. you guys would like to talk about with the previous exploits of your group? Something else I want to do when we're done with all of that. Um, we, we know that a bat, potentially that rider, had followed us as far as kind of on the road on the way to Andorra, or on the way to Hording's Hamlet. It was past Hording's Hamlet. And past so Hording's Hamlet. Since, some sense. For sure. Definitely some sense. And, uh... Some I'll, I'll dollars, look at Marsica and like... be like, Remember when we were walking, and I asked you if you'd seen anything, and you said no, and I was like, maybe I'm crazy? Yeah! Don't think I'm crazy. I mean, I am crazy, but not that kind of crazy. And I'm pretty sure we're being followed. Can Mosca do a perception check for that? Sure. Can I help her? Um, well, you know what? Let's all just fucking like we're all like You can all do individual perception checks. You're all just like looking up and around. <laughs> like, what's going on here? Oh, okay. Because my perception's not terrible. Where is it? 17. I got a 16. 22. 22. Um, 15. Kakira is the only one to see a uh, like a large shadow like figure that seems to be flying off in the distance towards um, the fort. Towards the orc fort? Uh, orc, orc fort. 
working for it. So we may still be being followed. There's definitely, I definitely just saw a bat. I so think they know. You're not no, sure. Where they... You guys, you guys know you're in the woods. You're in this stuff. They also have to make checks to try and see you. You're not sure if they've seen you, but you've seen one flying around. So they're they're patrolling. Maybe from here on out, we stop traveling on the road. Probably a good bet. Is there, any, yes. is there any underground way to get to where we're going? Not that we know of. Hmm. That smile says yes. <laughs> there is. Smiling. There are like. Um. Short answer, not yes. Anything. Long answer, not prepared yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> like, now that I know that's a thing you guys are thinking shit. of, it's like, shit, I need to start prepping that stuff now. <laughs> so I've, I've not prepped the equivalent of the Underdark in this world yet. <laughs> so. That's something that's sense. coming. So do we get the if, feeling if you that guys they're want to not try and like find something like that? I have an idea in here of what it is, um, but it's not written down. It'd be me winging it. So if that's something you guys want to try and find, if you're cool with that, then do we get the sense that we're being tracked traditionally or tracked magically? Make me, I guess, an insight check in this magic? situation. Are we all doing it? Everybody, mass insight check. The Calvio brain, like yeah, he's if, thinking if, this thing. Yeah. Lynn's pretty focused on food. Yeah, Calvio, make that check for me. Uh, you said insight. Yes. No, oh, don't fuck me now. <laughs> oh. Matt. Sounds. Thirteen. What was it? Thirteen. Thirteen. You're not really sure. You know you're being tracked. The Clovar. So do I get... Okay, is it... Uh, I don't think we are, or I'm not sure. And You can't get a good beat on it. You're not sure. Okay. If I felt that way, then I would definitely go over to Clovar and ask if there was any way he could tell if we were being tracked magically. Um... Yes, possibly. Um, Clobar is going to spend about 10 minutes and ritual cast detect magic. Okay. Um, you don't see any magic in the area. Uh, Other than what say, your companions have. Uh, Clobar would say, uh, I don't sense any, any magic uh, within the area surrounding us. Uh, I think for the moment we are uh, we are not being watched. At least not magically. Okay. He says um, I have I have a spell where uh, it to come to that that would allow us a few of us to become invisible. Oh. But it is extremely taxing and I don't want to commit those resources towards it unless it is absolutely necessary. Did Siga ask about the underground thing out loud or was that Courtney asking Aaron? No, that was the Siga question. Okay. Does anyone know of an underground way? Marsica would, would have a chance. About that? Um, Mar I would say Marsica is the only one who have a chance of something since it's kind of. I don't know. I was bored in Andorra, wasn't I? And I'm a yeah. lore bard in this area. I'm a history buff. I'm a dwarf. I would know about underground. I'm a druid. Diggy diggy hole. <laughs> I'm a bird. Um, let, I'm a bird. What the fuck, guys? <laughs> um, <laughs> what? I would. I would say only Marsica. Uh, if everybody else would hear of it, it, it's through legends. Like, you've all heard of, like, possible legends and things like that, but Marsica's the only one who have a chance to know if it's a real thing. Right? Would it be so... a 
survival, survival check. check. Yeah. Okay. No pressure. Okay, um, God damn it. that is, is, is 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Dear God. <laughs> um, so you definitely know. Check? I got a plus seven in survival. Yeah. Fucking shit. Okay. <laughs> Yay, Ranger. Um, God. so you know that there's definitely underground caverns and such underneath areas and pockets of the surface world right you've never been there yourself but you have heard tale of it um that fellow from your youth has told you of it which is how you know that it is real and um you're not sure of an entrance though you know if there were to be entrances it would be either sometimes they crop up randomly but the most consistent ones are near mountains okay um so she will relay that um and there's no guarantee that some of them connect right okay so she'll she'll tell the group that and like there's I cannot guarantee that if we tried to go through an underground pass that it it would take us to where we need to go. That's fair. Like we just need to stick to the woods. Into the woods. Into the woods. God damn it, that's gonna be stuck in my head for the next week. Yep, and that's a half. that's stuck in my head now. Thanks, David. <laughs> Welcome. Um Alright. So, is there any more deliberation that is to be had? Theo's nope. gonna sit down next to Clobar and have Aldra fly over and land on his shoulder and say, So do you want to learn this or not? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I will attempt to teach Clobar find familiar, which is going to be more of how well do I know the spell and can communicate it then can he do it <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so Cooper would also ask Calvio if there's a spell he wants to learn yes um well, you know I, I can, let's just like trade wizard bucks <laughs> <laughs> so what um yeah, are you are you guys gonna trade your spell books for a minute? Yeah, for like a minute. Is there, sure. it, like rules is written like your rules? spell book is written in a way that's comprehensible to you personally? That, that's up to you. Like if you're that par if you're a paranoid wizard who writes to your spell book in cipher, then yeah. Um Clobar is not a paranoid wizard. Okay. I mean he he would probably have written some spells, like he probably would have written Fireball in a cipher, but like most of the spells, no. Okay. Um, so, and then how, how that would work, like, Calvio, if you were to hold on to Clobar's spell book for over a day, you could prepare the spells that are in that book, you know? So if you find spell books around in the world, you that's one way to learn new spells, right? Is you transcribe them into your spell book. So you can basically, so there's, um, I, I did some reading on this. There's no real, um, like, teaching the spell. Basically, Clobar would learn the spell if he had the time to transcribe it and into his book, and then he could learn it. And there's a gold uh, requirement. There's, that yeah, to there's that. a gold thing to that. I think it's 50 okay, gold I'm not pieces. Worried about gold. But, I'm not worried about gold. Yeah. So Clobar would like to start transcribing... Um, I'm familiar. Yeah, you could do that by the end of the night. Okay. He gonna do that. Do you have? What spells do you have to I'd offer? I'd be able to Calvary see in his, in his, uh, oh, what I uh, see in your spell book. You can, this is meta, you can only learn first or second level, right? Correct, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you like 
can't read. First them. level spells. Uh, I have comprehend languages, magic missile. That uh, one, magic missile. All right. Yep. <laughs> all right. That one. So, this is this is interesting. Uh, having two wizards in the party because you guys could effectively just learn each other's spells and like double <laughs> the amount of spells if you have the gold cost for it. So, um, What's the gold cost for it fifty. Uh, fifty unless it's within your your oh it's not yours you're a blade singer so yeah fifty for you. Yeah. Um, but like if Clobar were to learn a divination spell it would cost him twenty five rather than fifty. Unfamiliar is conjuration right? Yeah, it is. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and subtract fifty gold. All right. Um, while they're doing that, can Kakira look through that book she got from Zerf's assistant on Magic uses for Mist. trolls' blood? Lur. His name is yes. Elgash. Elgash. Yes. Uh, yes, name. you can. Um, what have you found out already? Uh. I don't know if I found out anything. I haven't had a chance to look through it yet. Okay. Uh, I have some base knowledge of stuff. Yeah. What like, is I the base knowledge trolls, you have? So... Trolls blood's used or has regenerative properties to it, um, and I believe I can make healing potions with it. Yeah. Uh, so. I have proficiency in medicine. If that changes anything. Um. Not really, at the moment. Um, go ahead. So reading through the book, he gave you a book on the uses of trolls' blood. It's not like super big, but it's it's um, a respectable size. Um, looking through it, you see that the most common use for it is creating healing potions but the type of healing potion that would come from it is a um let me look here is a superior healing potion all right that sounds so, pretty good so it ta it would take some time to basically distill it and imbue the magic with it but that is a prime ingredient for making a supreme healing potion um it's also used in spell or in um, potions that are effectively have the same effects as the Greater Restoration spell, um, or like when combined with other things to get like the spiritual properties, the spiritual restorative properties. But the thing that kind of jumps out at you is that there are various different potions of how to regenerate limbs. Okay. And it explains, like, what I need and how to make all of these things? Yeah, it does. Okay. So, um, send me a message after the game, and I will do a write-up of all of those. All right, sounds so good. That, so that you have that information. Um, cool. Uh, is there anything else Marsica Flint would like to do? Uh, Marsica wants to attune to her bow. Yeah, you have plenty of enough time to do that while they're doing their spells stuff. You spend some time with the bow, knocking arrow after arrow, shooting it into the trees. And um, you learn that the oath that you swore seemed to have a relation to this bow. Oh. Um, you would know that when you knock an arrow after about an hour of this, you knock an arrow, and in your head you hear an elvish swift death to my or swift defeat to my enemies. And instinctively, as a response, you say, Swift death to you who have wronged me. And you yeah. let loose the arrow, 
and it seems to have a great deal more force behind it in striking the tree. It goes farther in. Cool. And so. She's, um, she's digging it. I'm going to send this to you in on Facebook uh, if okay. you haven't already gotten it. Um, I haven't gotten it. I'm looking at the description on D&D Beyond, but I don't know if it's the same as what... Uh, is it called the Oathbow? Yeah, it is. It, it, it is purple. Well, uh, I mean, the name of it is purple. And that's... it does tell me... I wonder if I can... Here, I'll just copy... Yeah, I sent it to you on Facebook. So if it's if it's the same one from there, then Okay. Yes. Oh. Cool. But oh, this oh, bow this bow is ivory white with gold filigree and gilding on it. Yes, yes, the bow is but I was just saying the um on D D Beyond the name of it is purple showing that it's rare. Very rare. <laughs> yeah. So um all right. Anything Sega would like to do? I don't think so. Sega, I kind of asked his questions. So okay. I think he's just kind of in a more meditative state, making sure he's all good for tomorrow. All right. Passed out size appropriate dinner dishes. <laughs> Sounds good. So, you all bed down for the night. Who is taking first watch? Marsica will. Marsica will well, hang on, watch. wait a second. We learned this last time that it's awkward if you take the first watch because you need the least amount of sleep. Okay, so she won't take the first watch. Never mind. <laughs> People literally died because of this. <laughs> so... Maybe uh, not Marsica first. Kakira can take first watch. All right. So, Kakira, go ahead and make me a perception check. Uh, 19. 19. Um... Uh, looking through the night, your watch goes by uneventfully. So. All you hear is the crickets. Who are you waking up next? Uh, I guess I'll wake up Calvio. All right. Hey. Calvio, making a perception check. Oh, that's really, really bad. Ten. All right. Looking around, you don't really see much. And your watch goes by uneventfully. You know, oh. you seem to be caught up in the thoughts of the day and where you're headed. Siga. You have a few hours of calm sleep eventually your dream is rudely interrupted as you are shunted yet again into a black void chains in the distance is this where I can try to do something Okay. Okay. Last time Sega yelled out. Um Okay, so this time mm -hmm. can Sega move? You can will you find that you can will yourself in a direction. Okay, so you guys gonna go So you guys gonna try and go away from the sound this time. 
trying to move away from the sound? Yes. All right. So, you will yourself away. Seems to feel like it goes on for eternity. The chains dissipate. And you have a moment of silence. But then, in front of you, you hear it again. What do you want? Zika's getting ag agitated at this point. Agitated. Agitated. <laughs> <laughs> You hear a voice ring out yet again. <laughs> I want you. Why? As Why you me? see this, as this says, these two white eyes, gargantuan open up no pupils and a chain shoots out towards you I need you to make me a wisdom saving throw Cynthia knows yay Twenty three. Nice. So you as as the chain shoots out towards you, realizing that this is your dream space, you push it back with the force of your will. The voice says again. Yeah. <laughs> I would have been disappointed if that I have I on you. The last thing you see out of place is a single golden canary comes up in between the eyes and just flaps its wings at you and the eyes dissipate and you wake up. Okay, quick question though. What was the last thing you said? Because the voice was cutting out quite a bit. Ah, sad day. Um, I know. He Sorry. said, um, I would have been disappointed if that worked. I have uh -huh. my eyes on you. Oh, lovely. Okay, well now I have a golden canary stuck in my brain. That's going to pique my curiosity, slash I'm going to be looking for it everywhere. Calvio, as you near the end of your watch, you see Siga shoot awake near his tent, or in his tent, <laughs> I I'll guess. just kind of look over and just be like, you good? Tiga would sigh. Say like just another one of those stupid dreams. I don't know what they mean. This time a chain tried to grab me, but I knew it was a dream, so I was able to push the chain away. And the booming voice spoke to me and said that he would have been disappointed if that worked, but that he's keeping an eye on me. And then this little gold canary appeared. Does any of this mean anything to me or my head tenant? <laughs> Besides what we already know? No. I didn't think so. Sometimes you just gotta ask. Um, Calvio will walk over and sit down and 
and say, well, uh, I know a thing or two about weird dreams, so I can at least understand where you're coming from. I might not understand your dreams, but I understand the restlessness that comes from them. It's honestly just frustrating. I just want to know why, why me, and what the hell does it want? You hear a dog yeah. howling in the distance. <laughs> Wait, actually? <laughs> I think it's more barking in the distance. Barking yeah, in the know. distance, yeah. The his name, his name is George. Uh -huh. so you know. um. Hello, Crinkle. Crinkle Pie. Uh, how many uh, watches are left? Is it just one or two? Um, one more before Marsicus. Okay. Well, uh, are are you awake, awake, or are are you needing more sleep? Would that have bugged my sleep? No. No. So, okay. Yeah. I'm awake, awake. I'm irritated. I can do the last watch. Second to last, but yeah. or it's yeah. fine. Yeah, whatever. Semantic. Practically. Okay. Um, Calvio will pat Siga on the back and say, let me know if you need something. And go to his tent and sleep. Appreciate it. Go ahead and make and me a perception check, and, Siga. And stretch. And get ready. Mm. Twenty-two. Nice. Um, looking around. Anger fuels it... me. <laughs> yes, use your use hate. Your hate. <laughs> use your power. Um, okay. Oh my gosh. Uh, in the distance. They don't seem to be moving towards you. But you do see lights going coming in and out of existence. Very far off in the distance. They don't seem to be moving towards you, though. Well, the last time I decided to wait on this, it was a bad idea. <laughs> did, like, some time passed, or did that happen pretty quickly? It's It's been about 30, 40 minutes. Okay. Shit, I was going to say... Um, Calvio was still awake. I would have been like, hey, <laughs> stick your head back out of your tent. Um, <sighs> let's see. So, oh, Marska hasn't been up yet, has she? Not quite. That's no? the okay. next watch is hers. Right. I'm assuming. Okay. Yep, I think so. Unless somebody really wants to take a watch. <laughs> Uh, shoot. I hate bugging people when they're asleep. Um, okay. So you could probably would go wake up Marsica and ask her to come look at this, see if she knows what it is, being foresty like me. Okay. Shall I make a perception check? Sure. I mean, if you, if you, uh, I... you'd have to go back to, and meditate for a little bit longer. As well, getting up since it's it's not quite the full bit okay. of your. Unless I mean I'm not gonna I'm not gonna split hairs. I think it's fine. It's only twenty minutes. Oh okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so you, so, so I should. Would I have just pointed that out to Marsica? Yeah, then? you can point it out to her, and she can see it. She can see the lights popping in and out. Oh, okay. Okay. Off in the distance, quite a bit. It's it's hard Marsica. to see at first, like Marsica. It's it's fairly far away. Do you think okay. they're will o' wisps again? Um, like last time. I guess this is where my perception check should come in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sure. Uh, da, 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 
3020. At first, you're not really sure if it's people walking through in the torches with the trees. But then one stays in the same place and comes in and out. And you're like, that's probably a will o -wisp. Okay. Yep. 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 Uh, th does it look like they're coming towards they're our just camp right Staying where they're at. Okay. Hopefully um, they don't have a friend. Hopefully they don't have a friend. We I didn't see anything else unusual with it. Nope. Okay. Then I guess I'll just I'll look at Sega and I'll be like, all right, um, if they start to show any sign of a threat, then I'll come and wake everybody up. Until then, I'll just keep an eye on him. I'm suspicious and on edge because I know what they meant last time. <laughs> um, well, I mean, we, I, if you want, we could try to get a closer look. <laughs> Kelly is asleep. <laughs> yeah, right. No, I don't think venturing far away from camp would be a good idea. Okay. So we'll just keep an eye on them. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Is Siku going to go to sleep at this point? Essentially, Passover watches, right? It's the right time frame for it. Yeah, it's about the right time frame. Okay. Then, yeah, but I'd probably be sleeping kind of light. <laughs> okay, um, that sounds good. Would, would Marsica know anything about just the, the common beings of the forest? Like, would she know that Willow is sometimes just kind of hang out like fireflies in the middle of the night? Make me a religion check. Religion? What? Well, that was a nine. Um, I didn't need a hero roll. <laughs> I only have a plus one to that one. Yeah, with your being a ranger, you know that there's tales of lights like this in and out of, of most forests. Okay. So they're just doing their willow wispy thing as far as I'm aware. As far as you're aware. Okay. Cool. So. Alright. Keeping an eye on them. Sika yeah. goes to sleep. After about another 45 minutes, you see no more sign of them. And... The sun begins to rise, and here comes the sun. <laughs> <laughs> and Flint um, is the first that doesn't need to meditate that it is up, <laughs> aside from Marsica. So Flint is up and starting to cook, I assume. Yes, I'm doing the stew. All right, so you're making the, the glare. Oh, I forget the name was that I gave it, but that stew. And everybody else wakes up one by one, getting ready for the day. Is there anything else you'd like to say to each other before moving on? Clobar would ask Calvio if he happens to have the components to cast Find Familiar handy and that he would purchase them off of him. You muted. You muted. David. You muted. <laughs> um. <laughs> um. No, because when we got to town, I didn't go get more. Well, no, no, no. I bought components from what's name. Um. Yeah, I think you had one or two. And I have one more. One more cast. So I I can as I, yeah, yes, yeah. Clobar yeah. would pay you the cost of those components, and while uh, Flint was cooking breakfast, he would start casting that spell. All right, 
as I am Flint. doing it as a wait. So we're less than eight hours away from this fort now, right? Yes. You th okay. You think if it's where it is where you have been led to believe, then you should get there around uh, early afternoon. It's ten gold, Logan. Yep. So go ahead and gotcha. add ten gold to yourself because I'm gonna pay you for it. Yep. All good. I'm gonna cast uh, use it as a third spell slot and make sure everyone gets another fifteen hit points for the day. Damn. All right. So you guys. I'm not messing have... around. Yeah, <laughs> Flint's not messing around with this. Go ahead and add. Uh, so your guys' hit point maximum, and current hit points are increased by fifteen with him expending that spell slot. Wow. This, the third oh, did we slide. get a long rest? You did get a long rest. Yes. Okay. Thank you for reminding me to tell you. Oh, I just need to put how much. Oh, okay. So, um, as Flint finishes cooking, passing out the rations, he hands the food out, and, and as this is happening, Clobar finishes his ritual cast. You see a uh, raven materialize and uh, land on on uh, Clobar's shoulder, uh, and he says, "Friends, this is Archimedes." Hi, Archimedes. <gasps> Can Marsica pet it? Um, Clobar turns to Archimedes. Can Marsica pet you? Archimedes just kind of like. Does like a shrug type thing. <laughs> I think that means him. yes. What did you say Archimedes was? A raven. A raven. A raven. Okay. Looks like a mini Kakira, maybe. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to the newt? Uh, that's still in the realm of possibility. It's just right now. Clover felt like we needed some more eyes on the in the sky. That is definitely a uh, valid I guess. point. Kakira's gonna ask, "Why did you make a mini me?" <laughs> Maybe you're just a big Archimedes. I was here first. Were you? But we wait. Would we, wait, would we know that. that familiars are like from a different plane and could have existed for a long ass time? Calvio and Clobar would. Kakira, I'm not so sure. <laughs> so Probably Kakira, Calvio would make a comment about. So, are you sure? No, no you were not here first. Trust me. And Aldo like comes and lands on my shoulder and does a little like, boop, boop, nod nod. <laughs> Question: uh, Do you need to know which? Because I could classify it as a celestial fae or a fiend. Um, in the future, yeah, if you could pick one. Um, okay. Just, just for your own knowledge, pick which one it is. Because in the future, it might become important. Okay. Uh, Archimedes is a, uh, a fae creature. Okay. Cool. And what is uh, Aldra? Oh shit! Well, I think. Um, we'll go with celestial. Okay, I'll just celestial and Archimedes is Fey. All right, cool. So, is there anything else you guys would like to do around the campfire? Mars is good. Good. Flint, anything else? After everyone's eaten, I just clean the dishes and prepare to move out. All right. We have dishes? Oh well, yeah, yeah, I've been using wooden of... bowls. Yeah, oh, as okay. part of your traveling packs, you guys each have like a wooden spoon, a wooden p bowl, and a oh, wooden fork. Okay. So it's, yeah, it's, it's part of the traveling deal. Gotcha. I've um, got like a bunch of pans. That's what's in the mess kit. Um, so... Hmm. You guys begin your trek out, walking for several hours, 
you um, as you realize you're coming near the area that you are led to believe where it is a storm begins to brew it is starting to rain we are walking in the forest, right? Like you are woods, walking okay. in the forest through the woods. Um, in the wood. Into the wood. I say it would it would probably take you a little bit longer since you are off the beaten path, but not as long since you have a ranger in your party. Um, so I would say Marsica leads you guys. It takes maybe about an hour longer than it normally would. And as you're approaching the area, it begins to rain. You see that the landscape is rather hilly, and uh, even with the rain, the orcs are anything but subtle. From about a mile away, you can see the smoke from what must be two very large bonfires. Oh, with a fire that big, they'll just burn the food. Um, oh my gosh. Marsica, you are the most aware of, of the land uh, of us. I, I think that you should be the one to find our vantage point. Okay. Um, good point. Uh, so, Marsica is going... Should you go by yourself? Okay, Marsica's gonna bring Calvio because Calvio is also. I mean, you can take. I was just saying, maybe not go by yourself. I mean, um, I was, if you want me to come, I will. I Cobar, was just saying that like I should go. Cobra says wait, and he is going to put his hand on Marsica, and she is going to turn invisible. That works too. Okay. Um, All right. How long does that last? Uh, up to an hour with concentration. Um, I won't go with you now, but I'll have Aldra follow you. All right, that works. I'm gonna leave Fane with the group. I'm like looking around. I, I don't. I don't see her. I'm just kind of like talking and looking. Kolobar says before she goes, um, if you attempt to attack with that spell, it will fade. So, uh, if you get in a situation where you think you may have to fight, uh, try to avoid avoid it if you can. Okay, sounds good. Um, all right, so I guess Marsica will start sneaking around to find our best vantage point into the encampment. All right, so Marsica, go ahead and make me a stealth check with advantage, looking for a good vantage point. You would know. To get to an area that might give you a good vantage point, it would take about uh, a little under 20 minutes since you'd be moving quickly with uh, trying to get there, I'm assuming. What is everybody Aldra else be, doing? Um, Aldra will be flying around her and sticking with her. Okay. And I will be looking through Aldra and I will put my hand on Siga again and be like, I can't hear you when I do this. <laughs> Shove me a little hard if you need me. Clobar's going to do the same thing through Archimedes, but he's going to have uh, Archimedes fly closer to the orc camp and see what he can see. Okay. I guess Kakira will just stand around and... <laughs> and not fly. <laughs> All right. And sounds not good. fly. No. It, sounds, it sounds like it's taken care of. Well, no, if I'm you following... Want, you, you know, uh, well, I'm following Marsica... Um, Clobars is going to the camp. If you wanted to fly, you could fly like near us, like kind of low. How, how, um, if you, in order for Kakira to fly comfortably, you'd have to break the tree line. You'd have to oh. be above the tree line. Maybe not then. Not yet. I mean, it depends on how, um, imperceptive the orcs are in the rain. It is raining. Does Aldra see any bats flying uh, around? 
So, first thing, you guys are in the woods, and the way you have talked, even though you haven't implicitly said that you are moving stealthily, I am assuming the reason why you're moving through the woods is to move stealthily. Yeah. Uh, right? Yeah. So, I need everybody else. Marsica is the with advantage because she's invisible. Everybody else make me stealth checks. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. Oh, 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 oh damn. Oh, Okay. It's a 27. Wow. Okay. Oh, God, Patrick. Uh, oh, God, Courtney. Um, yeah. <laughs> you and I aren't very stealthy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, got a, I got a 20. Dirty okay. 20. It was not, uh, it wasn't... Marsica, you're going to be separate since you're invisible and going to do your own thing. Okay. Um, I just rolled my... Oh, uh... I just rolled my important rolls. Uh huh. So it was a, a crit. It was a crit and a two. Um. Well, no, it's too late for me to switch it. Okay. But if if the orcs try to make a perception check, I want to replace it with the two. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then that negates all the math that I'm doing. Um, <laughs> so. Cool. Gotcha. Um. You're welcome. For, so, looking up, I'll, um, Aldra, it negates all the math that I'm doing right now, I should say. Um, so, Aldra, now we're there. Let's move on to that. Uh, make me a perception check for Aldra, looking around to spot bats. Get this advantage because sight. Okay. Not the natural one. Please be better than the natural one. Okay, not much better. Uh, nine. Nine? Um, nine. Aldra seems to be a hard time. Like, she got some leaves in her eyes as she came through, and it's like trying to fly around and sputter, and she can't really see. And then she kind of, like, comes and lands back down and is like. <laughs> I just sat Aldra just and just, like, pulled the leaves out of her face. It's like, it's, it's okay. We'll get it next time. Poor Burpee. Like, pat her on the head. <laughs> So, what is uh, Archimedes doing at this point? He's, Archimedes he's is going to try and fly kind of close to the orc camp and see what... Clobar uh, is going to try and see through Archimedes what, what's going on in the okay. camp. Make me a perception check for Archimedes. Okay. That is an 11. 11. Um, so, going up, Archimedes does hit a branch or something, but manages to not get the leaves in his eyes. And looking around, approaching the camp, you can't really get a good vantage point for seeing what exactly is happening in the camp, but you do see, off in the distance, a giant bat that is on the very far side of the camp, one that is closer to where you guys are, and one that is very far off to the right, it seems. So it seems like there are three giant bats that are kind of circling this fort. It seems, um, it seems to be that they have been put on alert for some reason. shared any of that uh yeah clobar would have archimedes fly back and then he would share that okay so say that takes about like five ten minutes ish marsica um you finish your about the next five minutes running through the forest you get to the top of what seems to be the best vantage point that you can find Looking down in the valley below you um, and trekking through this part of the forest, you can begin to see more and more stumps as you, as you get closer to the orc encampment. They're fairly loud, and you can hear a low murmur of voices. 
the sound of arrows being loosed in a low thud as they hit their targets. As well as some voices that don't fit the rest. Go ahead and make me a perception check. Okay. Looking around. Mm. That's a 14. 14. Okay. That's enough. Looking down, you try to find the elements of the voices that don't seem to match, and you see along the periphery, the fort is, for one, crawling with orcs, and atop a small plateau that the fort stands on, you can see what is surprising to you uh, patrolling and keeping watch are a few ogres in their midst. Mm. Yeah, this place, and, and Sarek was not, it seems not to have been yanking your chain this time. There's a lot of orcs down there of several okay. different types. Okay. Um, so... I forgot to describe the wall. So, um, oh. as you're looking through this, the wall is, they are currently building a 30 foot wooden wall. That is, um, there seems to be two sections of the fort. There's one that's a little bit smaller, has nicer tents and buildings. Um, that seems, and that are not buildings, but nicer tents and, um, furnishings, I guess. And that area seems to have, um, better equipped troops in there. Um, and then on the out bigger side is a halfway unfinished wall as it comes around. There's two large piles of logs and about um, 40 large but ramshackle tents. Does she happen to see like a religious Signa looking thing anywhere Insignia? within the camp? Insignia? Um, Make me a religion check. Seventeen. You, um, there is nothing there that you see uh, with your previous perception check. There's nothing that you saw that is religious, but you know, knowing orcs, it would take a big deal for them to erect something that it has religious significance. Um, they are God-fearing people uh, among themselves, or very spiritual and religious. They follow their idols, but they're on the move so much that it doesn't make sense. Uh, right. So they often keep those sorts of things on their person. Does she see anything? Like a that, pip? Like, well, yeah. Does she see anything that could potentially, accidentally, according to the orcs, catch fire that would get them all to gather around in confusion? There are plenty of things that can catch fire with the tents, and I mean, the wooden wall you surmise, surmise is probably treated somehow, but with enough heat, it <laughs> would catch. Okay. Um, okay, cool. So she's gonna sneaky sneak back to the group. You see that the fort is on a bit oh. of a high rise, too, and right. it, it would be um, hard to get a higher vantage point sort of deal. Like from where you're at, you're a little bit farther away from okay. seeing this. You're a bit so, farther, quite a bit farther than like 150 feet away. Okay, so we'd, we'd have to get closer. Okay. Um, so she's gonna <laughs> sneaky sneak back to the group then okay. and relay everything she saw. Um, and say if we want, to get them, we, there's plenty of things that we could potentially accidentally catch fire to and get them to group up in and gather around. But the thing is we have to get close. That is the important detail of that because of the plateau. Um, Clobar would say uh, Archimedes spotted, uh, noted several uh, bats of those bat creatures flying around. Like, Leo would ask Marsica if she saw a pit. Oh, yeah, did she see a pit? 
<laughs> it did not see any pits. Okay, no, there were no pits. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure he learned his lesson last time, David. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So. Uh, also, Marsica would have noticed that the orcs have cleared out the trees. There's a quite a bit of stumps that are farther away from the fort, right? There okay. seems to be like a clearing. And so, tactically speaking, they would be able to see people coming out of the forest towards them. Okay, so she'll also mention that. That's important, too. Smart. <laughs> For orcs, don't you think? Well... You, you would have... You, you From what you... The previous reports that you've heard, for some reason, these orcs are acting smarter. There's There seems to be okay. a reason behind it. You That's something you guys would have heard in the past. Right, it right, probably right, has, okay. I mean, we've already linked the orcs to the chained one, right? Or potentially no, leave. You, you, it's been floor. tossed around, but there hasn't been any oh. concrete, any con concrete stuff. Right. Okay. That so how cool. far, how far away is the wall from the tree line, like where the new tree line is? I guess. About, um, Marsica would say, uh, from what you could see, about a hundred to one hundred fifty feet. And we have those bats flying over. Head, so that's going to make things even more difficult. Could, potentially, Marsica stealth shot shoot one of the bat riders and kill him and then do that one at a time. <laughs> uh, you could, are, uh, you're welcome to try. Like, that's all, that's really a, cool. it's a possibility. It'd be very hard, but it's, I mean, yeah. something like that is a possibility. What if we... So they're already on alert. So us doing anything isn't really going to change. It's either it's either alert or shit we're getting attacked at this point. And if yeah. we do anything, they're going to know. And it's currently yeah. afternoon. So they're going to be so, able to see us better. It's but it is, but it is raining. It is raining. So you guys have that true. to your advantage. That's true. Oh, that would also make it harder to set fire to something. We could set fire to the wall <laughs> and just burn down the wall and go big or go home. I mean, but it's raining. Well, okay. I could still set fire to the wall, maybe. I, oh, well, let me put it this way. I have a better chance of it. Fireball is very hot. <laughs> and if the wall is treated, it technically maybe be flammable. <laughs> No, I doubt it. Were the logs that were next to the wall that they hadn't used yet and hadn't finished, were those stacked? Or were they, they just kind of laying and strewn around? They, they're Okay, so from what she could see, there were two big bonfires and there were logs surrounding that, like for people to sit on or for, for them to sit on and okay. eat their meals and such. But there was also two fairly large stacks of wood. Um, okay. But, like, I was talking about for, like, the wall fencing. Like, you said that it wasn't finished all the way around. Yeah. Were the logs for that there? Like, were the extra There's, ones for the unfinished part? So the extra part? ones seem to have been moved at each end of the wall. Like, the stacks are at where the ends of the wall are. Okay. Then... What if we were able to knock down those stacks somehow to knock down the wall to cause a really big distraction over on the where that side of the camp is? Ooh, that's. Is there something that Marsica could shoot, or maybe Calvio could mage hand to cause that? I don't have mage hand. I have not... a. Kakira has a large have... firework. <gasps> okay, so you're gonna pick in this. Put Mary and Pip in this. Um, <laughs> a big one. Firework. And... It's it's a big boom firework. That is what I wrote down. <laughs> Small firework and a medium firework. Oh. 
you guys are currently coming from the western side in front marsica could see from the unfinished bit there seems to mm. be entrance like uh, ramps almost to the plat plateau that are easier to walk up um on the northwestern and northeastern side if you guys wanted to try you could try and climb up the back side of the plateau to get on the back end of the fort as well I mean, we've climbed things before. Yep, we have. Although we um, had Excelsior to help. Yeah. I don't think any of us... My strength doesn't suck as bad anymore. It's not good, but it doesn't suck as bad. For a dragonborn, I'm not very strong, unfortunately. Uh, for a chipmunk, you know, I, I don't have a lot of, uh, uh, you know... Calvio, he's just, he's really gotten too chipmunky. I don't know if I believe him. <laughs> what? <laughs> I, am I, oh, do no, I still okay. sound like that? No, no, no it's really good. Only okay. when you were talking about your strength, then it's impossible. <laughs> yeah, it was so funny. It was like, oh, <laughs> damn. <laughs> perfectly <laughs> fine. What do you sound perfectly like a chipmunk? I love it. <laughs> I hope that goes in the recording of this, so I can go oh, back yeah. and listen to it. Oh, it'll be there, I'm sure. Yep. Okay, I almost forgot about this one. Um, Sega. Sega can also conjure animals, and Stampede. I can. Yeah, if I do bigger Stampede. things, so like. I could conjure that could be helpful, like two giant eagles, and I could potentially use them, maybe. Lord of the Rings. Is yeah, fish. to like drop <laughs> people in. Oh <laughs> Fly, you God. fools! Um, I'm gonna put or... a big X about about where you guys are at, just so you know, you're in that area. Or I could do like you know two giant hyenas to go distract and or knock down parts of the wall so what about we that? so what i can't do it this is the thing our distraction is only going to take people away for so long right and it's not going to take everyone nope. so it's distraction we go do shit and whatever we end up fighting it's got to go fast yeah Otherwise, we're just going to end up in a bigger fight that we can't win. We need to get them to cluster so we can thin their numbers. Mm hmm That's kind of why I like the wall idea, maybe, potentially. Yeah, or we need to pinpoint the head honchos and, you know, cut the head off the snake kind of deal. Well, the fight people presumably, that, Marsica saw that there were fancier tents in the center of the camp, so... I mean, if we can, if we can do something to get in, oh, all right, and we could cause set a fire to one of those tents, then all the head honchos would be together, maybe. Assumably. Uh, Clobar says, uh, uh, "Kakira, you mentioned a firework. I think that may that may be uh, a good idea." Okay. Um, I have fireworks gonna, as well. Are we going to try to use that to knock down the uh, the wood stacks? A firework in and of itself would be an excellent distraction. So Assuming they, they uh, are not familiar with the technology, they would have they would not be likely to be able to tell it from an enemy attack probably send um, out some uh, a group to scout where it came from too. What would Marsica think the orcs would, how they would respond to that since she has a lot of knowledge on the orcs behavior? You know, uh, fireworks are very rare in this side of the world. It is extremely unlikely for the orcs who come from the Badlands to have come across fireworks. Okay. Kakira is the only person who's really seen fireworks in action. Maybe Sego once in his life. 
and you guys have um, heard like tales of them and things like that. Maybe Clobar too once. Okay, so I guess Kakira would agree then. I right, Kakira, Marsika. Who am I again? Wow, not a bird. <laughs> I'm the bird. Yeah, you're the bird, not me. It's the word. <laughs> So is this a firework that we could like shoot into the middle or not exactly like the middle, but into a more densely populated part of the camp to really like get people to run and freak out? Or is it just something that like we would set off on the edge of the woods? To get well, people to like or use it as a, a distraction yeah no yeah, and then i, I do think like that Scooby -Doo. i think we have to use the firework as a distraction get them to look a certain direction while we do something like burn down the wall or something to get inside and then so... we've got a lot of uncovered space between where we currently are yeah. and the edge of that and, well, if we do, do the firework, maybe the bat I have, guys... I have two questions. How far... Do we know how far these fireworks go? No. Would Kakira? No clue. <laughs> um, you've not I've... worked with fireworks? You know what they but do? I've seen not them. Like, you've seen them? They can go pretty far. Um, Just don't know a number. You don't know a number. You You think... From what you've seen, um, if you got closer and maybe got to the edge of the tree line, there might be enough space there for it to shoot, and so that the blast would be over the camp. If that if that makes sense. Small one B. Um, I said they they'd all go about the same distance. It would just be the amount of boom. no, like physical like, weight of the firework. Oh, if, like. I don't know. Um, let's like, say... <laughs> could Aldra take a small one into the air with her? I uh, it'd be a little ungainly. Like she, it'd be, it'd make it hard for her to fly. What if Aldra Archimedes. and Archimedes flew it together? They could. If if it was both of them, they could fly it together. I'd say. Oh, this is a bad but, idea. Waiting to but how how are you gonna light it? Is my question. So like, here was my gonna, plan. Just, like drop it. This was my plan. Um, Flame arrow. Ooh. So yeah, what I was getting on was the small one. Aldra was gonna. I was gonna light it. Aldra was gonna take the small one and fly up, and then right before it went off, I was gonna snap her out and then have it go, and so it would seemingly come from the air, and they wouldn't know where we are. Um. Okay. Could that Archimedes was the plan. carry like a lit stick in his beak? <laughs> <laughs> this is so jank. I love it. <laughs> um. Damn it. Yeah, because it's not a normal animal. Right, a normal animal would, uh, a normal creature would freak out, but since it's a like a technically a spirit, that you tell it to do things, <laughs> sure, um, you'd have to contend. There's, it's still raining. There's a chance the flame would go out, um, yep. and with the wind of the flying, there's a chance the flame would go out. But yes. Um, hold on, let me check something. Well, okay. remember we needed both of them to carry the one firework, so. I need to check. Okay, never mind. I was gonna say I'd just shape water around Archimedes as he flew, but it has a pretty hard uh, range limit. Uh, um, is it, I mean, no, oh, never mind. Okay, so say because you you can only cast touch spells through. You're familiar, right? Only touch spells. Yeah. Say we manage to distract them. What's the plan after that, though? That's what I was saying earlier. Like, it, 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 where are we? What are we doing? 
fireball. Well, we have to get them to gather or something first, and we have to get well, close enough for like, you to fireball. Seem like oh god, he's rolling dice. Does we it have, seem like, like a... the rain is gonna let up anytime soon? Not really. How so if you waited till it was dark, it would still be raining. Maybe if you waited a few hours, because since it is the middle of the day, like it, it would probably uh, go ahead and make me a survival check. Bring oh shit! Huh? Uh, Abra, how tall is the wall again? 30 About thirty feet. Thirty feet. Oh, so that's okay. That's another 15. thing. Cause... Sorry, sorry. Go ahead. No, you're good. We we can't just like. I don't think you can just shoot a fireball in there with a 30-foot wall in the way is the problem. Look, all I'm saying is I purposely prepared grease today. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. So, technically I could, if I were close enough, I could totally shoot it over the wall. You don't need it. to, like, see? No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, we could also Aaron. go for the cliff idea and go to the southwest side, I believe that's what Aver said. Yeah, but uh, the south, the, the whole uh, like southern side of it is Where's... covered in cliff. You think with a 15 survival check that it would turn into a, a more of a drizzle uh, by the time evening came. I'm more inclined to chill out, wait for the dark, and go with that because now if we go in and we try and do some sneaky bullshit and our distraction goes away they can come back and see us but if we wait until night and we try and do some sneaky distraction bullshit at the very least we can yeet ourselves out of there into the dark and be like okay we'll do this again tomorrow do orcs have dark vision uh i'm pretty Wait, sure Marsica would know that um, orcs. They probably do. I'm pretty sure they do. I'm like 90%. Because half orcs do. Yeah. You would know orcs are really good at fighting at night, too. Yeah, I, I like our advantage of the stormy time. That's my argument okay. there. I also forgot that Calvio cannot see that well at night, so maybe we should um, do this now. Yeah. Clover would be against the cliff idea because have you ever tried to climb a wet cliff? <laughs> not, not a good idea. Marsica would be like, I climb cliffs all the time. <laughs> wet cliffs? Oh yeah, in the rain, no problem. Okay, Under a so the best plan we've got right now, I think, is a mix of the two: is try and knock down the wall, domino effect the wall without being seen preferably make people freak the fuck out and then figure out some way to set off a firework so that is far away from us so they freak out and from then they're gonna start ganging together with whoever they fight with usually or at least they're gonna group up to be ready fireball and yeah. then go from there um so, would we want to do um, do firework first to distract them, then do something to knock down the wall, like they'll knock over the logs or whatever it was to knock down the wall, make it look like something fell while they're watching the big old firework that'll freak them out? Simultaneously? Because that would freak me the fuck could out. We use the big, <laughs> could we use the big firework to knock down the piles of wood at the wall? And then have it, one of I like mean, the medium firework as the the distraction. You think a, the big firework would have enough? We but, could also, if you did want to use the two fireworks as like the distractions, I could also conjure up two, like I said, like giant hyenas or direwolves or something really big, and let them split off and knock down those edges of the like try to ram over those edges of the wall at the same time. Would they be strong enough to do that? Would she know that? Yeah. Um, the... Or maybe the, the, like, giant hyenas? Or maybe at the very least knock over the thing to knock over to take down yeah, the wall? Yeah, knock over the logs. They'd have to make the a... I mean, knocking over the logs, definitely they could do. 
the it would be easier to knock over the walls the part of the wall that is unfinished the part that is finished um since it is like its own self-contained wall around the that that one would be harder but it's right. possible um i like that idea my only concern with the firework is that they'll see the trail of where it came from and know that it was deliberately aimed that's why at... i was trying to get it in the air with Aldra. Right. Because but then it would small, have come small from the air. wouldn't be able do, to do the, the damage. Does Flint have any ideas? Flint just kind of looks at his little legs and pats his big belly and he's like, so, um, where, where do I fit in this plan? <laughs> I'm not climbing any walls and I'm not outrunning anything, so. You get a guy. And you get a guy. <laughs> and you get a guy. Um, I think I like the animals idea. Yeah. And, and so the portion, the portion, the portion of the wall that we would be knocking yeah. down, it's just that portion. It's not gonna like domino effect the whole wall. It'd and just be the the outer camp, I guess. Does Flint have anything in his arsenal of spells that can help with the situation? I mean, if they get grouped together a little bit, I could do Shatter. Um, Read the spell of Shatter. Read the Shatter spell. It does... Uh, sorry, that was... Yeah. It does extra damage towards inanimate objects. So, so would that, that be able to pop, knock down a wall? Yeah, that might that so, that would. So Flint Flint would know that with the shatter spell. Um, sorry, I didn't I didn't mean to sound condescending if it came across that way, but um, <laughs> Flint. God, Eric. Yeah, I know wow. the worst. Flint uh, Flint would know that with the shatter spell. He could probably, he feels like he could easily, from the wall that Marsica described, he could easily, like, take care of part of it. Okay, so we knock but, down, we use animals to knock down the uh, the outer wall, and then we get in there, Flint knocks down the big wall, and we go from there? But whatever, like, but that's whether if Flint wants to share that information, if he thinks that's a good idea or not. That's oh. I, I do definitely share that information. But my concern is, how do I get within 60 feet? Ah, you stay with us. You'll get within 60 feet. Just... <laughs> Sega, what is that? Se Sega's like, you'll ride. <laughs> <laughs> you'll ride. <laughs> You're good. Clobar Just... says, I could make you invisible. Yeah. Yeah. But would he stay in control so, when, he, so, cast, when okay. he cast a spell? Hang on, question. If I ca so if I cast a spell while I'm invisible, regardless of the spell, it pops me out of invisibility. I'm pretty sure if you attack um, something, it's not oh. regardless of the spell. So if he were to cast an attack spell, like shatter, then yes, it would pop him out. Uh, Is so grease an attack spell? Well, it specifically says the spell ends for a target that attacks or casts a spell. Oh, oh, or okay, so it doesn't matter. Spell. Okay. Okay, never Thanks, mind. Logan. Okay, okay. But what if I sneak in there, break down the wall with the invisibility spell, Calvio casts grease at the entrance, I run like hell, get as many of their attention as possible, come rolling down that fucking hill, and then Clobar <laughs> brings a, a fireball right there at him. Clobar says, um... My people have a special technique for goading the enemy. I believe that uh, you have a prime opportunity to use it. So, <laughs> we're sneaking into the wall. He's blowing the fuck out of the wall. And then, Rolling like a bowling ball oh, back. <laughs> I'm casting grease and... Do 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 do. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Uh, wait 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 wait. 
just to be clear, is this the like inner wall that we're talking about? Yeah. The hell up? Okay. So is this after Firewalk and Firewalk Fireworks and Hyena bullshit? Okay. Yes. I think that'd be smart if we can get him there. Okay, yeah. so Firework and Hyena bullshit. <laughs> See what happens. If all goes well, invisible, 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 shatter, it. grease, fireball, run. <laughs> yeah, basically. Uh, what did you say, Mike? Fireball. Yeah, that sounds like a good plan. Okay, so then I'm <laughs> like gonna give my fireworks. Even in the rain, like. <laughs> I'm gonna give my fireworks to Kakira then, because I am not gonna be on, uh, team firework. I'm on team. Make sure. Okay. Things get so I'm set just on fire. launching the fireworks. As so a it, what, is Kakira flying and then launching the fireworks, or how does is that what you guys said? I or? feel like she wouldn't. She would be seen if she flew. Yeah. Okay. This, okay. Yeah, I'm giving you the fireworks, and then I'm looking at Aldra and be like, "Do whatever he says." And then Aldra flies over to your shoulder and sits on your shoulder. Okay. But so we're doing Aldra, the Aldra plan. But but Aldra can't do it by herself though, right? No. Here's an here's a suggestion. Uh, what if Clobora cast invisibility on Kakira and Kakira launched the firework from in the air? It's not a spell, so yeah, I'd allow it, and not attacking anybody. All right, all right, here we go. <laughs> so, okay, We're so how the it. fuck do we get? How do we get Flint to the wall? Uh, so casting invisibility on him. Uh, yeah, I can cast it up to two more times. Oh, that's a lot. Is though. it concentration? It is concentration. You don't do it on but one person. if I cast it at third level, I can cast it on two people. Oh. So, okay. But what's the? But wouldn't it be better to cast fireball at third level? Just say. Well, I can only cast fireball at third level. I'm yeah, suggesting saying. saving the slot. Well, I have two slots, and I can get one of them back on a short rest. You really think we're about to be getting a short rest anytime soon? We might be waiting. And if, I mean, we're distracting and staying hidden, so there is a chance that he could I... chill out. So while let, we yeah, let's take stuff. let's take some time between plan A and plan B, like yeah. part, uh, part A of plan one and part B of plan one. So we'll knock the wall down, fireworks, see what happens. If we feel like it's good for us to continue on with the next part of the plan, we'll continue on. Sega. Yes. Um, what are my two giant hyenas going to do in the meantime after they... I, do you guys want them to just they run be part through of plan the B outside? So, well, because if, we, if we wait, then there's going to be this awkward time of what do they do... We don't want them near us, because that's just going to draw attention to, to me and Splint. Well, yeah, like, that's what I was saying. Do you want them to, like, run around, essentially, until they run out of hit points and just start terrorizing the village, essentially? And just... I don't see why not. They so fast. Yeah, They've they got would. 45 right. hit points apiece. So we it should, just depends. We should hold on to them. I don't and think I can... you should just waste them like that. I think you I... should. Yeah. I think you should send them in to knock it down, maybe make them look like confused animals for a minute, and have them, when then the firework goes off, they freak out like animals do, and run off in a direction into the forest where the orcs won't find them. And then when the second part starts to go, after, maybe after Flint um, destroys the wall, they come back in. Maybe one of them picks up Flint to help get him out of there while the other one's just kind of terrorizing whatever orcs are nearby. Well, we don't want to be near that wall for very long because I'm casting Grease and getting the fuck out. Well, exactly. So, so the hyenas I'm not go in be to there get when Flint. that fireball shows up. So, <laughs> that's so a the bad idea. That's what I'm saying, though. The hyenas get in there to get Flint. And the other I was going to slide like, down the hill with Grease. Oh, right. Oh, crap. <laughs> Bilbar says, uh, we need a signal uh, in case things go awry. Archimedes. And he, Clobar kind of turns to Archimedes and he says, fuck. And <laughs> repeat back. <laughs> oh my god. 
<laughs> yes. Oh, it does have goodness. the mimicry trait. Just yes. Yep. I love it. Ravens I can look. talk. Yep. <laughs> 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 Wait, uh, and we just have this. Just... So black Raven. So it's black. Or we just hold on to the. We we keep the hyenas hidden until we're like in the camp and you can call on them like when we're if we all get into a, like an oh fuck situation yeah shatter's gonna be really loud i mean i could stand there and scream for a second too and play my uh joban and then come sliding down like a bowling ball as soon as you cast shatter and that wall is down i'm casting grease and we're leaving clover says to uh flint he says I tell you what you must do. This is a tradition of my people. You knock the wall down, you turn your back to them, and you pull down your trousers. <laughs> <laughs> and then you run. Flint like gets this well, nice like, first. first time a devilish smile kind of springs across his face. He's just like, oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so. So let's just let's let let we're recap. doing the stuff. Okay. Just so we're all on the same page. We're all on the same page. So we're gonna hide. So we have team firework and team wall. Yeah. Team firework is Kakira, Marsika, and Siga. Team wall is Calvio, Clobar, and Flint. Right? This sounds good. Team Firework is knocking down the wall. Yep. Team Wall is breaking the middle wall, creating hopefully a choke point and making fried orc for dinner. Right. Let's cross our fingers it works out this way. Okay. Not sure how I feel about Aaron's face, but you know. <laughs> I'm just loving try. this. I was like, man. I, I wonder how they're going to deal with this situation, and I am not disappointed in the slightest. I'm just uh, loving just, all of these just ideas. Just making sure. I'm not launching the firework at the fort. I'm just launching it away. As yeah. You're launching it over to the fort, like in in the fort, not in anywhere. Okay. Like, this it's close to the middle, I guess. Like, over it. Like, the fort is... and... Uh, and then this is the order. We're Sega's doing hyenas, knocking over a wall, and then firework, right? As close to simultaneous as possible. Uh, and Kakira okay. now has the medium and small firework, too, because I gave them to her. So shoot okay. off firework as fireworks hitting right before it gets to Just the wall. Just let him go. Wall. Okay. All right. I think, are we ready? Flint yeah, takes off it. his backpack with all his cookware, walks over to a tree and like takes a bunch of branches and tries to cover it as much as possible. Walks <laughs> over to the group and is like, if I don't make it back, you get this back to my mama. And he takes the hatchet and sticks it into the bag. <laughs> He's just that. like, Wait, don't you need stretching. That? Don't you need <laughs> that? I still have a sword. Clobar puts his hand on Flint and says, I will make sure. Uh, I too am a mama's boy. Yeah. But, but as he like starts to go away, I'm like, no, wait, we don't go yet. Hey, whoa, whoa. Not your turn I'm just yet. stretching. I'm not walking away. Okay. Oh, I'm like gosh. stretching, just, like prepping to go, like making sure I'm not going to run out of breath. Okay. okay. Give it a shot. All right. Are you, you so are waiting cool. until night before this is happening? Or are you staying during nope. the day? I we're doing part. the stuff now. Doing the in stuff the rain. Now. All right. Do Kakira want invisibility or no? Kakira will need invisibility for this to work. Does Flint want invisibility? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, so, Clobar is going to cast invisibility at third level and make both Kakira and Flint invisible. Wait, what's... And the hyena's gonna be able to pick him up later, because they aren't gonna be smart enough to be able I to cast see him. Adder, I'm gonna be unstealthed. Oh, that's true. Okay, the okay. The right. just to get me in there. We'll take it back. All right. Here we go. So, Kakira, you have the fireworks in hand. You fly up 
above the tree line. It's like, this is really pleasant music. Do you let loose the fireworks? Yeah. This is... All right. So. God damn it. You, <laughs> you let loose the fireworks as they suit. <laughs> and above the... Uh, and if I miss any of this from what you guys described, please stop me and say, No, I want to do this thing! Um, above the orc encampment, there is a loud... <laughs> kind of sound. And they are all... That's... Like... You hear a series of like screams of terror... And, like, movement happening, all sorts. What's the next thing that's happening? The wall, the outer wall, is getting knocked uh, over. Ziga, at outer this wall. point, has already cast the conjure animals, pulled up two hyenas. Okay. They're breaking down the logs to break down the walls. So, let's go ahead and move over to the battle map. So, if you guys yeah. feel close Should to I be uh, making my move now, because it's going to take me a minute to walk up there? Yeah, you are You are making your way. <laughs> making your way okay. downtown. Walking downtown. Fast. I'm not walking fast. fast. I'm too fast. fast. <laughs> walking slow. <laughs> walking slow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, waddling. <laughs> okay. So, you guys, let me know when you get to the new um, panel. It should be just all black right now because it's sure a war. So, uh, we're going to have you guys enter from this side from what Kakira has seen. And from, uh, I want re reveal areas. I said reveal. So, boop. You guys would have seen all of this extra outside stuff for sure. Oh, the squares are tiny. This map is big. <laughs> oh, yeah. God. Um. All right. So, what, what else would you guys have seen? Um, I mean, Kakira is flying above the Oh, Kakira camp. is flying, so yeah, we'll say above that much. Um, looking through here. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Sarek said 200 orcs. <laughs> Sure guys, did. guys. <laughs> oh boy. Um, wow. Well, we're committed now. I don't expect you guys to fight all of these guys. These are just what's here. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, I think we're going into this with a good plan, though. Oh, this is totally different than what I was envisioning from everything. Oh, okay. I am sorry about that, then. I, I should have... It, it's okay. It's okay. Okay. I just... Okay. Oh, I would have done this very differently. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. Here we go. Um, future note for me, We might then. be aborting the hit-and-run tactics, guys. <laughs> people i need i need my visuals all the time or else i'll just come up with my own thing that's <laughs> uh, all right let's stick with it let's stick with it we'll be fine we'll be fine well all this is going on archimedes is kind of flying around okay so boop so that is that is everything you guys have seen with this from between everybody and all of the information that's all you've been able to see okay where on this map am I headed to? <laughs> so, you would be headed toward the bottom part. The bottom part of the wall at the cliff, which is down here. Oh, yeah. oh shit. Wrong wrong thing. Down here. In that mm -hmm. area. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yep. You need to be within 60 feet. So. Yep. Okay. So. Um, I'm not going up to the wall. Once you guys go ahead and put your your tokens where they would be at about, um, I would assume oh, somewhere shit. either in the top corner 
or in the bottom left corner, like you guys would have had time to get into your um, vantage points, so to say. Oh, so, I can barely see my token. <laughs> Yeah, you gotta I zoom to in. Figure out how much zoom I want on this map so I can see all of it. <laughs> uh, yep. Okay. I'm at six. Okay. I mean, I'm flying. Okay. So yeah, I don't you know are how flying. I do this. I don't know how to do this. I guess I'd be over here for now. No, you're. You guys are probably. Yeah, where? from what um, if if you want to change your mind to that's where you want to be, then that's fine. Uh, from what I I'm just not, thought, I'm not sure. Um, would you we guys be on the other side it would be up here, yeah, like near up this here. ramp. Yeah, like you would have. But if you're trying to get up there, you would see that there are two. Like, you could probably summon the hyenas past the ogres, um, okay. sneaking up to get that. Uh, and then I don't see where Kakira is at. Uh, so, she's over here. I wasn't sure where to put her since she was like oh, flying I around see. with the fireworks. Okay. I'm gonna put you with the rest of the group for right now. Okay. So. So are you saying we'd be like up here in this corner? I missed the top, your like yeah, first. top left corner about is so the the first okay. group, like the firework group, it's top left corner. The the wall grease fireball group is the bottom left corner. Mm. Okay. So, we started here first. Kakira, go ahead and ping on the map about where you would have um, had the fireworks aimed for the fireworks to be. Okay. Um. So, I'm probably going to say, like, the medium one or the small one would have been, like, here. Okay. That direction. Um medium over here okay. and the big probably just like right, right over the, the middle so yeah these guys who are currently working on the wall are they all basically fall prone because they they are scared shitless from the blast and they don't know <laughs> where it came from same with all of them over here um you see the one tonaruk and even even the ogre kind of like falls on his butt, and he's like, "Oh!" And um, <laughs> the Tanaruk is the only one who like stays standing and like roars in the direction, and he's and he's walking over towards this pile. All of these guys um, in this area are all on the floor. Like, what is happening? And everybody is currently. Um, moving towards the center of camp, right? The ones that have stayed up. All right. So, let's see if I can get them to move. So those guys have fallen prone. These guys are starting to move over towards this direction. And then these ones are beginning like to move. <laughs> yeah, it's just easier for me to move because there's just so much happening on this map. That would be a lot of individuals. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, these guys are moving. Uh, so, what's the what's the next? What thing? about these the guys are prone. The big firework that went off over the bonfire? These guys, um, you watch as they all they all fall onto the ground. Since you're flying, you can see this. You see a figure come out of the center tent, um, followed by. Uh, two of those, like, healing, the, the two of the female orcs with long claws seem to follow him, and he yells across the fort with this booming voice, We are under attack! Ready yourselves! Find the intruders! And the orcs are trying to come to their senses right now since some of them are dazed from the blast and they're currently not really sure what is happening. Fabio is um, going to look to where he thinks Flint is and be like, time to go. All right. Uh, before we get there, Siga, did you, you wanted to summon the, uh, the hyenas? Yeah. 
What's the, the range hyenas. on the summoning spell? Oh, not far enough. These um, guys are from where I thought we were. These guys are currently walking towards the center here. And every everybody's attention is on towards the center of the camp right now. It's sixty feet that I can summon feet? them. Yeah. So gosh, I really wanted them on the other side. That would have been more helpful. If you move yeah. 60 if you move to about right here you'd have enough to mm -hmm. pop them up near the wall but since there's a lot happening right now i'll allow you because they you can you control them right yeah so i can yeah yeah i would i would allow you to um like cast them from where that you are and have them move in towards the wall to try and knock it down if that's what you want to like do. run in kind of yeah. deal or if you okay. wanted to try and start messing up with the, uh, with the orcs. Okay. Whatever. Um, uh, I was just looking at their speed too. Got too many tabs to keep. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. So. At at this point, are we still having? Yeah, we're still having them like hit the wall. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I guess I like summon them what if originally we weren't so far away what if originally we were like in these trees over here if you guys uh uh that is totally possible um would that help i would i would say if um it. yeah i'd probably say that's better fine. for all of us if you guys were closer yeah, because that's yeah, way that's far away. That's really far, yeah. Wait, yeah. Where is the gate that we're trying to knock oh, like down? There? I don't understand. So, yeah, this yeah. is pictured so different than what I thought, so... <laughs> sorry. I'm so sorry. No. That's okay. <laughs> um, so, you going. guys, there wasn't necessarily a gate, per se. The This wall is unfinished on the side on the left. This wall is unfinished on the right, like, barely started like there is a gate in the center here that leads into this but this bottom part is just um uh it's just a normal wall like flint was planning on just casting shatter on the wall to break it down right yeah that makes more sense to me than the hyena thing yeah well cuz i thought it was it had surrounded that the walls had surrounded the camp a little bit more and that yeah. the logs were tilted in to where I could like use the logs to knock down some of the wall okay. for it to kind of like domino in and fall in. That's was my thought process. That's on me then and I apologize for that. Like if you uh, want to do no, something it's else, totally you're, fine. you're more you're more than welcome to do something else. Um should Okay, so now that we know this, should I save the hyenas for a like to go in with us uh, yeah yes. yeah my so like bodyguards maybe... yeah if anything just something else for them to hit that isn't us yeah so plan is really just firework distraction while flint goes up and blows the shit up out of this wall they are currently yeah. very go. distracted right now okay so and we're flint gonna head to go. to it yeah flint needs to go so flint there's also invisible all right, where movement. where am I blowing up? Like, where on the wall am I doing this? Like here-ish, probably. So there is what, are these guys right here. Yeah, they, moving they, at all? They are, they are. You watch as the, there are. Um, these guys would have passed by this point, but there are. There is an ogre, and a. Why is this not letting me move things? Um, these what? two guys on the bottom left would have moved on by the time you guys got up there. Okay. Um, but there is an orc and an ogre. Chilling. Would they have started to move towards, like, the entrance up here kind um, of deal at that they, point? They have currently just kind of, like, walked up to the wall. This one is starting to move up towards the entrance. The big ogre is walking up towards the wall and is trying to, like, see if he can look over it and he's not having much of a time. He's but not very Flint smart. Flint needs to go down here. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay, since Flint's invisible, I won't make him roll a stealth check, but uh, I need you to make a perception check for me. Uh, 
Uh, Flint, go ahead and make me a perception check when you get a chance. Stupid little spike pit thingies. Fuck! Perception. 19. You notice that you uh, have... You would have seen walking up, so you did not get uh, hit with it. But there is a spike pit right here. It's a little bit bigger than it is. It's smaller than that. But there, there is like an area that is covered with leaves. But you managed to find your way around it. It's not hidden very well. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, fucking things. Calvio is in sight, right? I'm. I am sneaking, in the like a little bit behind him. Okay. Go ahead and make. Okay. Me a I'm gonna. I'm gonna use message as well and like. Don't we'll send it over. If once you cast a spell, invisibility drops. Just so you know. I thought you said an attack spell. It's a. It's that. It's, it's any spell. spell. Yeah, it's any spell. Wait, but you okay. found that out. Dose, dose. dose. Uh, what is the dose? Dose twenty-two for your perception 22 on for stealth. stealth. Twenty-two on stealth. Awesome. Stealth. And then make me a perception. Um, unless uh, I would have gonna... followed, pretty much the way Flint went. Okay. Do you still want me to make one? No, it's fine his hand yes. so you could <laughs> follow him hold my hand hold my hand <laughs> some so pretty deep steps so all right so go ahead and move your character uh right behind uh, small Hans. god fuck i can't hang on thunder buddies get it oh my god <laughs> Flint. Are you going to cast Shatter? Yeah. Oh, you roll. Cast oh, it. he's Keep casting Shatter. Ten feet. Ten damage. All right. So, um, one, two, wait, what? One time I cast it as a third level spell. Oh, is a third level spell? It, oh, it did it. It did the damage. Okay, cool. Um, sweet. So, you watch as you cast Shatter. There's this loud, just crashing sound. That actually is timed with a thunder strike. <laughs> and the wall seems to crumble down there. Um, let's see if that guy is paying attention. Oh, he rolled a natural one on his perception check. This guy's asleep. He does not notice <laughs> that there is a hole in the wall in the back. Kind of care in the wall. He didn't hear the fireworks either. D yeah, he, he's that guy's fucking asleep. He's just conked out. Well, if he can sleep through the storm, then these voices aren't going to wake him up. Yeah. So, looking around, you've popped from invisibility. Um, and you know, you've know you given away your position since casting that spell. Um, so, how would we do this? Does that ogre notice anything? This, this ogre right here starts to turn. He's the only one who notices. This guy has since walked, since you guys have walked up, he has since walked that far away up there. Um, the ogre is right up against the wall, and he kind of looks towards you, squints for a second, and does this. Aldra, you have, while he's you have. What's can I up? send Aldra to like fly in his face since I saw him do like all this? Lure him into the spike pit. Yeah. That was my thought. Yeah, um, Aldra can definitely do that. He's sitting there, like, batting away at this bird. I'm, ass are you guys, I'm assuming you're going to stealth again and try and get out, or what are you doing? What are we doing? Yeah, uh, um... I thought he was gonna pull down his pants, bend over, and then and then roll down the hill after <laughs> booting the board camp. A bowling ball. That was before point. we had this layout and how things are. So we, we get so basically the only person 
that knows anything is weird right now is maybe this orc right here. Maybe that ogre. Ogre. Ogre, yeah. Um, do I have time to do something? Yeah, you do. Uh, Clobar is going to move within 30 feet. Okay. And he is going to cast Suggestion. Ooh. And he's going to look at this ogre and say, you did not see anything. <laughs> All right. Uh, what's the spell save? I believe it is wisdom. Oh God. What's the, what's the DC? <laughs> yeah. Is there not? Yeah, it's a wisdom wisdom saving throw, and the DC is fifteen. Oh jeez. If only you had another terrible roll. Important <laughs> rolls. Let's look here. Oh, yeah, this is... 15, you say? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a fail. You watch as you look at him. His eyes kind of glaze over, and he kind of, like, looks in your direction and says, Oh, I didn't see anything. And he kind of, like, puts his club, and he kind of just, like, sits sits back down, and he's just, like, looking off to the right. Well, I told him to go back. I told him oh. to go back to the camp. You told him to go back to camp? Okay. Yeah, but then, he didn't see anything that he should go back to camp. He starts he starts walking back to camp then. He's walking back up. Nice. Nice. So. Boop, boop, boop. So do we want to save Grease then right. and not put it at the wall since we can technically sneak in? Uh, how does concentration work exactly? You have to you think You cannot really hard. concentrate on... <laughs> You cannot concentrate on two spells. Um, so you can have a concentration spell, but cast another spell that's not concentration? Exactly. Okay. So Kakira's still invisible. Yeah, yeah. How is suggesting concentration? Yeah. Or is, no, it lasts for eight hours. Kakira is still invisible. That's a badass. Yeah. So... There's a hole are in the wall. Are we going in? We like we need to decide. Like, are we you going can, in now cannot. since we can get in? I think yeah. If we like stay hidden here behind the. Um, Is Kakira still probably... flying? Ooh. I mean, she's invisible. I imagine she would have still been flying while all of flying this was happening and just like watching. You are you watch as as this guy seems to be pointing at these orcs right here in the center. A gate opens up here, and he sends them all out to go search for something. Like he's going, he's told them to go aid in the search. Oh my god! I should probably just fucking grab them all and move them. <laughs> 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 These guys would be gone. Oh, I switched. I that I got rid of that person. I don't want them. There's too many of them. At this um, point, uh, those still in the trees Archime would hear Archimedes go, uh, fight, fight. <laughs> like that. <laughs> um. So, so I, I, I would I, probably tell you to quiet your bird. Guess we could. Like stealth roll to catch back up to with um, Calvio and Flint, and we could all kind of sneak into the back side of the camp here. Yeah, there are also these two. How high up are these two? Like about forty feet. That's about. Cards. That's a watchtower that's ten feet above. Yeah. Okay. There. And there's. Are they still up there? Just. They're or have they been like the deafened by the fireworks? <laughs> they're. They've. They've been deafened. They're. They're. Basically, since the fireworks were so close to them, they would they would have disadvantage on perception checks at the moment. Okay. So. So we're going into the fort. Yeah. I don't see why not. We can hide like okay. back here. Mama ain't raised so, no bitch. Flint and I are going in here to hide. Yeah. And wait for going friends. Back in there to hide. Okay. Both of you guys, uh, entering the fort 
Go ahead and make me stealth checks. Shit. Okay. Ooh, is there a magical barrier? Oh, I didn't think about that. Come on, plus seven stealth. Come on. Nineteen. Okay. I don't know how far I'd make it. Kinda... You'd make it. You guys, you um, they did not rule well on their their perception checks. So Flint's seven did not alert anybody. So you guys have enough time to get inside the wall. Okay, so okay, we can so we could all get in. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, is this the guy that's asleep right here? Yep, this guy is currently asleep. We're not fucking with this dude. Oh, he's, I need to move my dude in. He's like snoozing. That? What about Fang? He's coming. <laughs> okay, so... This dude, these are the guy, like, all of the... Demon. The From people who are like in charge that we think are in charge, right? Yeah. The, he came. He came out of that tent. Um. So new plan. I'm putting grease here. And um. Someone can just do some fireball shots right here. Throw them back. Shot. So, shot. 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 Fireball. <laughs> but, okay, so I know I you said that those are claws, but they have the Tanaru icon. So are they claws or are they Tanaru? Those, those are Tanarooks. There's other there's other claws around. So he said oh, that like there were two there were two Tanarooks. Yeah. Oh, that one. I, sorry. I, so this one and this one are both Tanarooks. I went in and edited this earlier. That one should not be there. Oh. Okay. Which is which is strange because Kakira is not seeing the um, the two ones or whoever saw them the two before they are not currently visible in this situation. So Kakira, I'm assuming you're flying right there at the moment. Yeah, I just I had zoomed in so I could see what's going on. I didn't want my, <laughs> my token off in the middle of nowhere. Since you're invisible. Yeah, I'm um, still flying. Yeah. So, can Calvio... Hang on, how far am I right now? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55... So, okay. I'm going to move right here. Let me make okay. sure I'm doing this math right. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. Okay. 55, and I... Do I have line of sight of this dude standing right here? Um, I think I do. Barely. I yes. think it's. I'm gonna look at Clobar and be like, "Are you ready?" Um. Clobar's trying to decide if it would wouldn't be better to throw a fireball like here. Where? I don't. Where? Hang on. Like here. Can you reach that far? Um, it would take some finagling, but my range is 150 feet. And Aaron said that the gate was open, so... Well, what if we uh, attack that first leader guy? He's going to scream for backup, and all of those fucking orcs are going to try and squeeze through that gate at the same time. That's so we may be able to get them more bunched up. That's fair, uh, and that, and that big club bar would save his fireball. Okay, well, I could still put grease right here, you still and then fire bolt. Right? Yeah, yeah, I could put grease right here and fire bolt it and light them on fire. Okay. And maybe the tent. And a few other things. Yeah, sure. Why not? So, are we good with that plan then? Club bar's down to clown. Okay, so I am casting grease. Wait, are we I'm good? I'm the bardic inspiration, David and Clovar. Nice. All right. So is that like an inspiration point that I have? Is that what that is? No, you add a d6 to any attack roll or skill check for the next 10 okay. minutes. Oh, d8. Well, then I am... Oh, god damn. Okay, I am putting grease centered on this dude. Okay. So... You are starting 
Um, oh, jeez. All right, so let me pull up our turn tracker here. It's like grease fireball back to back, like not even waiting. Not fireball, firebolt. Or firebolt. Bolt. <laughs> the puny one, firebolt. Um, I wish I had I'm fireball. I'm about to do 4 10, 10 worth of damage, so you might want to rethink that okay. uh, puny comment. Um, no, puny as in firebolt. Like, my puny one. Yours is giant. Mine is not. Shut up. <laughs> uh, we're just going to do... We're just going to do groups here to make it easier for me. Um, okay. So, as you go in and cast... Fire, um, Grease. I need everybody to go ahead and roll initiative. So he, Don't get the, a grease, surprise round. the Grease goes off. Oh, no, you do. So we're just rolling initiative, and then you guys are okay. going to have a surprise round. Yay! So, so I also know this is kind of a horrible time, but I'm going to have to be getting off here in like 10 minutes or so. Yeah. Because we're we're I'm not going to go into this fight to tonight. Sleep. Yeah, it's... Um, we're just going to get the initiative roll, basically. Oops. So, I'm gonna go down the line. You guys tell me what you got. So, Clobar, what'd you get? 15. Uh, that guy's not there anymore. Right there. Uh, Sega. 18. Calvio. 23. Nice. Kakira. 14. 14. Fang. 10. Marsica. 24. Oh, nice. Uh, <laughs> Very different roles. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, let's Blake see. got a 19. I see it in there. Um, okay. So, yeah. It, uh, since you since you clicked on your token and then rolled initiative, it automatically, automatically puts it in the turn order for me. So. That's cool. Flint or... Uh, where are we at here? So, I need to look up something. Calvio, what is your spell save DC? Uh, um, that's important. Spell save DC. Uh, 15. 15. Uh... My internet is being slow. Okay, 15. Oh, and it's a dexterity save. Yes. Okay. He has disadvantage since he doesn't know where it came from. It came out of nowhere. And as you come around the corner, bursting through the wall, you see through the slit of the tents the leader of the seemingly leader of this fort. You point at the ground as grease covers it, as the 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 Tanaruks and the leader of this fort all fall to the ground prone, right there, because grease is <laughs> grease is a twenty by twenty foot deal, right? Or is it uh, a ten by ten? Ten by ten. Ten by ten. Oh yeah, then yeah, they all are affected. They all fall to the ground, and that's where we'll go ahead and end tonight. And then Yay. next next session we'll pick up to see where this goes. <laughs> yeah, I mean it was a big deal. I and in hindsight, I should have put the map in front of you guys first because Marsica did see it. So, man, you let, let you let Calvio have his surprise round, but not me. 
Do you want to do you want to do the surprise round and throw your fire bolts? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Who so are you attacking? I'm that because of their being prone, that it's now at disadvantage. Uh, yeah, but I mean, you had that if crit. I use my inspiration. Would it just be a regular roll? You have a portent roll as well. That's what I'm, he's planning yeah, on I'm doing. Using that too. Oh, you're um, I, I will say, because Divination Wizard bullshit, then it, since it's happening at the same time, you would have had enough time so that it's not at disadvantage to kind of okay. do the Well, Kolar is going to use his Divination Wizard bullshit to cast a crit fireball at this guy. Ball or bolt? Fire bolt. Okay. Fire bolt. Okay. For clarification. It's very different thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... It's firebolt or bullshit. Go fire ahead and ball. go ahead and roll the that four d ten of damage. Uh, let's see here, and then subtract my uh, that seems wrong. Do you not add your uh? You don't add your intelligence to the... Uh... You don't add it to the damage. Yeah. All right, so it's it's nine points of fire damage to this guy's face. Okay. Minus Is he on fire now, too? Damage. And, and so you watch as the grease all lights on fire. So you guys burst into here, grease the ground where this guy is at, and light it on fire. And... We'll go ahead and end right there. For other people who have not done the surprise round, we'll keep uh, track of that, and we'll pick up there next time. So. Wombo combo. Woohoo! That ain't Falco. Bam, bam. Man, I can't wait to have 